Hi, making a video. Smoking a cigarette. Yeah, good. Alright, cigarettes are bad, okay? But I like them. Um, yeah, but I'm an addict, so yeah, so. Yeah, a real cigarette. Yeah, so it's just kind of nice. I haven't had one in like a month. So it's kind of a nice feeling. Hopefully I'll save enough for tomorrow night so I'll be calm and relaxed and have a nice conversation with the human race because I'll be calm and relaxed. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> yeah, video. So yeah, there's a couple things on my mind, so I thought I'd talk about them. First, I wanted to clarify. I mean, I did leave a link to my neighbor's circumstance in the last video. And um, I'm not empathetic with my neighbors at all, okay? They're the cliché, bad, welfare kind of people. You know, people go out and buy steak on food stamps. Um, they're just, they're, 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 they're what ruins charity, okay, basically. They're what ruins empathy because they're the kind of people you try to help and they just refuse to moderate or control their behavior. I've lived next door to them for 35 years and they're just, I used to pay their kids not to pick their nose because they would sit there and talk to you and be picking all parts of their body. It was just disgusting. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're, they're kind of people that they, you know, they, they're having a conversation 10 feet away from somebody and you can hear them a half mile away and, oh, just obnoxious, awful, dirty, terrible, awful. Yeah, and like I said, it's not like they haven't been given every chance to be civilized. And they just keep fucking people over. Um, just, you know, I don't even want to go into it personally. It's cost me in real bills. But, um, yeah, uh, my empathy has, uh, has, I've paid a price for being decent and generous. And, um, yeah, so anyway, there's no reason for empathy. They, they have... You know, they're just obnoxious. The fact that they're a news story, the fact that you actually have to have police come and tell them your company is no longer wanted, um, they won't leave the party. Um, yeah, you know, it's just part of their obnoxiousness. Um, you know, that they take somebody, they steal. For, it's it's like the criminal getting getting shot while he's robbing somebody and then suing the guy for shooting them. You know, that's just bullshit. Although it's wrong to shoot criminals, I'm just saying. Or, or the roof collapses. Yeah, he breaks into the house by digging a hole in the roof and the roof collapses and he sues the homeowner for having an inadequate roof or something. I mean, it's just so fucking obnoxious. So anyway, just the, these people are just, they are the definition of blight. Um, idiocracy all over the place, just as dumb and stupid a white trash as you can find. You can't, you couldn't construct a more hideous, monstrous human cockroach machine. Um, just, just in, insidious, insector idiots. Yes. Anyway, enough of that. Didn't want to get on it. I just wanted to make it clear that you know, no, I have. There's no, no. My gripe with the news story was that it just didn't tell the truth of what a what a obnoxious, ungrateful, blightish pile of shit these people are. They, they they live in a very nice community and they've never had any appreciation for that, or any respect for that, and um, they deserve to be kicked to the curb, so to speak. Um, anyway. <clears throat> And they haven't even been done that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, they've been given every opportunity to s lie on comfy mattresses all the way someplace else, and they still don't take the advantage properly. They still can't. They can't even do it. They can't do anything right, and they can't even be evicted properly. So anyway, um, sorry. So, but anyway, lots of work for me now, unfortunately. So trouble, trouble. Problem, problems, and whatever. So, but anyway, it's, you know, new life though, in a way. I won't have to listen to their dog alarm at all hours. Um, anyway, peace and quiet. I mean, it'd be a whole new neighborhood. <laughs> it really will. Holy crap. Um, you'll be able to sit outside and just listen to birds. How outrageous. Um, anyway, yeah, I could go on and on and on. I have other things to do. Um, so I think I'll respond to this uh, Zhang Shar guy. I did leave a comment. 
And, you know, he's just doing the, you know, the Internet's fun thing. So, yeah, he doesn't take any of this stuff very seriously, which is quite, you know, that's, that's your prerogative. But, you know, some of us recognize that it is kind of serious, okay? This whole life on Earth thing is this serious business. Serious shit is happening every day to people and to animals. It's serious shit. It's not unserious shit. There's a serious component to this thing. And you want to say, okay, the Internet's not serious, and YouTube's not serious, and everybody can just be a non-serious person. Well, fine, but I don't think that's rational. I don't think it's sensible, okay? You be non-serious in the bedroom or something, or even in the basement you can be non-serious. But, you know, when you're on the regular floors interacting with humanity, you should try to be a little bit serious, because it's a serious business. Every fucking thing we do is serious. Every activity we engage in is serious. It all has consequences. It all, you know, there are welfares at stake. I mean, it's serious, damn it. Every word we utter can have serious connotations and complexifications and implications. So to not take it seriously is to not take intelligence seriously, in my opinion. To not take the obligation to, to do the best we can here seriously. It's a serious issue. Efficiency is serious business. It really is serious. I just, how can you just, oh, it's not serious. It's all serious. It's all important. It's all implications. So, you know, like I said, do your laugh clowny stuff in the laugh clowny room, not in public. Hey, Gary, thank you for taking the time to respond. Well, you know, I really didn't take time to do it. <laughs> but I respond if anybody makes anything c close to a coherent video, I'm going to respond. But it's okay to thank me, but, you know, I do it for my own mm, service, <laughs> you know, to please myself. Looks like you got about as much snow as we did in D.C. area. Yeah, we got more. So, a few clarifications. Might have a few more, but I'm not sure if you comment on your own videos at all. No, I comment on the comments on my videos by making a video. Because I make videos. Because I don't like typing. And, yeah, I mostly just don't like, you know, type with one finger. It's just a pain in the ass typing. By the way, I do not have kids and do not expect to ever have kids. Yet, you're not doing that for any kind of rational reason. You're just doing it for some personal subjective reason. You think it's a subjective choice, and it's really not. It has objective implications. Once again, it's about the implications of actions. You know, not what makes you happy, but whether it can make you happy efficiently. These are really important concepts. So for you to have no opinion on the efficiency of having kids is, you know, I made the point, but I mean, it's just not taking the game very seriously. It's the most important component of the game. Anyway, one, the point about not wanting to live in third world country centuries ago, you're right that it was poorly tied together, but it was meant to relate to what I said before it. You know, I know what this whole argument that somehow life is grand is still kind of a bogus argument, because even though people lived less long in the past, they died less horribly in many respects. You know, this less <laughs> at least it was faster. Um, and yeah, morphine would have been great, you know, back then. Some way to kill the pain would have been great. But this whole idea of living doesn't get you too far, right? Because you just live to die again. Live to die again. It's probably a James Bond title, right? Um, you know, what's the point? Survive to die some other day? You know, what's, you know, it, it you know, it's, it's kind of stupid. Um, my point was that a place has a very high average level of suffering based on much more than mere population. Well, I, again, I, you know, I just don't know. People live shorter lives, but they live stronger, younger lives. They were less debilitated, less disabled. I mean, when you look at the disability numbers, they're pretty frightening. You know, by the time you hit uh, the 70 age bracket, you know, you got a 60% chance of being substantially in some way or another fucked, which, you know, is not very pleasant. Places that have been miserable for centuries were often much worse off even when they had a fraction of the population they have today because research levels have not kept up. Well, again, I, you know, it all depends on what you think is a, the way to go, you know. 
10 years in a nursing home or, you know, two months starving to death. Which one do you choose? Yeah, I think I'd go with the two months starving to death. Overpopulation is certainly a problem, but it's much more of an issue of resources being uneven. Well, like I said, even if you even out all the resources, I mean, it certainly would help. Um, you still have to somehow, you know. I, I mean, look, obviously we, we are doing civilization very badly. We're not getting the most labor out of people we could and the most productivity. They're squandering their lives on bullshit and nonsense and, you know, trivial, silly nonsense that we pay for. Um, the biggest industries, if you total them up, is all this entertainment shit, and it is pretty much shit. So, yeah, we could be doing a lot better. You know, we could we could have our standard, same standard of living and work two hours a day. But we've chosen to carry the rich instead. I am well aware <clears throat> that I am very fortunate, some percentage by birth and some by personal effort. Well, again, personal effort you can't even take credit for because, you know, uh, that becomes part of circumstantial decisions, you know, that some of which you have control over and some of which you do not have control over. People end up in places because of circumstances, you know. Something happens, they have to go to work early in life, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Disability, lots of things happen to people, so it doesn't really have that much to do with you personally doing shit. Um, and again, you're all, we're all just byproducts of environment. We're all just byproducts of our circumstances. We're reflexes, you know. It's all reflexes. It's all cause and effect. It's all chains of cause and effect. So even when we do something meritorious, you know, we really don't do something meritorious, <laughs> you know, because we just really don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. If you're empathetic, if you're decent, if you're responsible, you're all those things because you can't really be anything else because you know it's the right thing to do. You're kind of stuck once you have that knowledge in your head. You're kind of stuck with it. You can't go back to saying, water's not wet, you know? Gravity doesn't affect me. You can't go, once you know gravity affects you, you're stuck with the truth. Oh, gravity affects me. I have to, you know, anticipate its reality in the world. And so it just limits your function. So we're not free to be personally efforted. You're either motivated or you're not motivated. You either do it or you don't do it. But you do it or you don't do it based on a whole chain of events. And so, you know, it's very hard to separate the you worm from the worm pile. To put it another way. Two. You did address most of what I said in my video, but one overall idea I still have not seen addressed. Why is it that all of the good things about life, our human achievement, are entirely discounted so as to amount to zero, and all of the bad things about life are counted as terrible and real and not the least bit discounted. Well, you know, read, this is where Benatar's asymmetry comes in. Um, say somebody has made a comment on one of your video, your video, and I, you know, I should do those comments, but they are kind of inane and stupid and simplistic. Um, but it's this idea that there's, you know, even this comparison, somebody made some kind of comment saying, what about the people who want to live, you know, before, you know, the, who would want to have somebody risk their birth, you know, want to be birthed? <laughs> well, the obvious argument is, is you can't hurt something that wants to be bur born, right? I mean, they're not in hell, and you're rescuing them from hell. So there's no negative connotation to that desire being unsatisfied because it doesn't it isn't left as an unsatisfied desire <laughs> you know it's only a, a projection in people's brains just like the value of the human race itself is a projection in people's heads it's not something you can you can dissect out of the real world and that's why I use the Martian example or the Venetian example because we don't miss them and we don't miss them because they wouldn't be earthlings and they wouldn't be human and we're just complete bigots, and <laughs> it's just a prejudice and a uh, you know an, an, a, you know a, an attachment that has nothing to do with anything rational. It only has something to do with some kind of sub subjective, ego-centered, um, visceral uh, reflex and um, an ignorant reflex at that. And so, so the same argument is made about this this discounting the good. I'm not discounting the good where you're fixing a bad, right? So there's a ton of good things that happen in the world because somebody sacrifices to um, prevent somebody from having some worse thing happen to them. So we do a small 
we do a small preventive action, uh, okay, and that prevents a uh, horrible holocaust or, you know, like, like having standards for earthquakes, stay safe buildings or some other thing and you save a bunch of people from being crushed. These are all sensible sacrifices, they're all good things, they're all things I applaud. But they're all things that have value because they prevent harm, not because they create something called good. And so the argument is, is most of what we're chasing is chasing hungers and deprivations in ourselves, things that are lacking in us. We're feeding something, right? We're not creating something, and that's a big difference. And so that's where you need to read Benatar and understand the asymmetry and the fact that... Um, <clears throat> you don't need something when you don't need you know what I mean when you don't create the needer the need goes away with this kind of free lunch attitude you don't need the lunch if you're not hungry it's that simple there is no hell or purgatory where people are trapped and say I need to be alive my child the child I would have had or your children the children you could have had aren't sitting in some purgatory somewhere going, please help me, save me, make me conscious so I can, you know, chase pussy. They're not doing that. Or chase cock. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever they like to chase. Uh, no, um, this, I didn't want to leave anybody out, kind of thing. Chase, well, you know, they really should be fucking that. Um, anyway, so normally acceptable, efficient fuckables. Let's just put it that way. Um, anyway, um, like they say, why does only the negative side of the ledger count when tallying up the sum of human experience? Well, like I say, I have gone through this extensively, explaining that uh, it's just unfortunate, but that's what it's all really made out of. Everything you sense as positive is really just a relieving of a deprivation, satisfying tensions, relieving you of worries, um, the things hanging on top of you, a gravity of burden. And when those burdens are released through either physical acts of tension re <laughs> regulation, um, uh, you know, your, your sense of bliss or feelings of bliss are made out of a take me away Calgon kind of experience. It's like movies viscerally do that. They occupy you into an adventure, you're satisfied and your ego is uh, um, vicariously um, elevated, um, you know, you have a whole emotional experience through the medium and the same thing, whether it's sex or food or whatever your comfort thing is, that's what you're doing, okay? It's not that you're creating something other than eliminating your discomfort. So the negative comes first, it's a negative generated game and it has no momentum without it has no function without it. You have to create the hole before you can create the use in the shovel. The shovel has no use <laughs> until you create the hole that needs filling. It's that kind of simple argument. Uh, that seems to be the most <clears throat> arbitrary part of the philosophy. Well, it's not arbitrary at all. It's quite mechanically understood that this is what motivates organisms in their existence is desire mechanisms that are contrived to make them want what's in the environment. They're, they don't choose rationally to go chase the food or do this or do that. They are compelled by mechanisms of psychology and physiology to do these things. So I'm, I'm just saying the fact that it smells good or does this, that you don't rationally say what, what, what should smell good. You don't, you don't have those choices. These are mechanical mechanisms intended to drive you Okay, and the, the argument is, is that these drivers are not rational drivers. So the goals have been defined by irrational forces, and we are using our rational forces to find means to achieve these goals instead of defining the goals. We should be judging the goals and say, what should our goal actually be? And if you're rational about it, you say, yeah, the goal is this thing called satisfaction, and the easiest way to create satisfaction is don't create dissatisfaction first. It's so frickin' simple. You want to turn the sewage off? Just turn the valve off. No more sewage. It just isn't that complicated. Yet the most central to the idea that we should wipe ourselves out entirely. Well, like I said, the subject really isn't about wiping yourselves out. I mean, these are all negative ways to look at it. 
it's a graceful exit. So you could just say, you know, I mean, you can't see, you know, I mean, I, I think you need to concede that, you know, the way you describe things or the way we describe things as a culture or society has so much to do with what connotation it has. And so, yeah, you can make it out to be some sort of horrid holocaust against all of our visceral satisfactions and comforts, or you can simply describe it for what it is. There's going to be an exit. The human race is going off a cliff eventually. The sun explodes, whatever happens, doesn't matter. Technical progress, nanotechnology, all kinds of things that could be a terrible menace to us in terms of we're just going to destroy each other through our own hatred of each other or some other thing. So, so, I mean, there's all kinds of negative writing on the wall, and the argument is, well, look, there's ways we can do this. We can gracefully exit, we can slide out of here with our dignity intact, or we can go brutally and harshly and negatively. And so I'm just saying, so if I use the word graceful exit instead of wipe ourselves out, you, you see how those two things, they have a different connotation and meaning based on how you say it. Is there something stupid about a graceful exit? Is there something stupid about applying your brakes, even though you know you're going to have an accident? The accident's inevitable. Do you just plow into the accident, or do you try to mitigate against the damage? Do you try to do something to make the damage less? And I'm just saying the easiest way to reduce the damage in this circumstance is just to recognize that the life thing is, <clears throat> is messy. It's dangerous. It's not a free ride. It comes at a price. I mean... There's lots of ways to describe this. I, I mean, uh, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was saying, okay, you know, how, how, how do you look at this thing? Because the life thing does seduce you with, with different messages. So, so it's like there's this thing, and it says bomb on it, but it also has a smiley face, you know, it's a little smiley face. So it says bomb, but it's a smiley face, you know, and then it's ticking, going tick, 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 which seems like a bomb, and it's shaped like a bomb, but then it says kitty, kitty. You know, every five minutes it goes kitty kitty, kitty kitty. You know, it, it, so it's this mix mix message thing. But it does look like a bomb. You know, and it says bomb right on it. I mean, the danger is quite obvious. Okay, I mean, the fact that life ends in death, and death is not pleasant, even as a psychological experience, it kind of sucks to concede. Oh, I did all this work to figure out what life is, and now we're just going to rub it out. We're just going to take a a harsh, brutal, abrasive thing and rub right into it and rub it right the fuck out. Um, for what? <laughs> what? I went to all this trouble so you could just erase me? Fuck. I mean, that's on its very face. Messy business, okay? Now, unless you have some sort of God delusion. So, I'm, I mean, basically this conversation is with atheists and atheists should have a little bit of humility and, and, and caution and, and pause when they're looking at this thing that says bomb. And even though it's saying kitty kitty and has a smiley face on it, you can kind of see that those might be dodges. Those might be there just to fool you, you know, to make you warm up to the little bomb. This is a bomb, okay, and it goes off in really nasty fucking goddamn ways. And you don't need much imagination to be able to appreciate that, yeah, I wouldn't really want to be born over there to that asshole that that's a scary prospect to wake up someday and call that thing daddy come on it doesn't take much imagination for you to find somebody on this planet that you wouldn't want to have to call mummy or daddy I mean, you'd probably call them ookabob <laughs> you know ookabob <laughs> or akmak Ugh. And you'd have to talk like that oh, that would be annoying in and of itself Anyway, three. Um, two, uh, Goose said it is point in his comment. I don't know who that is. Uh, I know you're used to dealing with lots of hate, and that was definitely not the point of the video. Well, I know, but see, <laughs> which hopefully you understand already. Yeah, I understand already. Okay, I understand. People want to have fun. Everybody's just girls, and they all want to have fun. But I'm not a girl, and I just don't want to have fun. I want to actually be a human being. I want to get more out of my conscious experience. I mean, I want this conscious experience to actually mean something, but I also want my intelligence to be, to be actualized in some more meaningful way than to say, gee, you know, I were whacked off in new and unique ways. I mean, I can do that. I mean, I probably have invented some new and unique ways, and I've probably made my contribution to you know, masturbatory science, 
but I would like my life to mean a little bit more than that. You can understand that? I mean, it just seems like a, a rational thing for my brain to want is is to maximize its functionality. That should be like its prime directive, is to say, hey, brain, be very brainy, all right? You're a brain, be brainy. Don't be asshole, don't be liver, don't be kidney, be brainy. Yeah, so that's what I say. That's what my brain says to me as a prime directive. The first thing this brain is supposed to be is not to behave like a little puckered ass and say, me wanty dick or something. You know, it's not supposed to do that. All right. Uh, which hopefully you understand already. It's all in good fun. Fun, 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 fun. I mean, it just, it isn't. That's the whole point. Life isn't just all good fun. Life is horror and torment and agony, and it can be just absolutely brutal. And to just be so flippant and casual and, you know, just because you don't want the burden of having to accept the reality that this is a real game, that this isn't Monopoly money, it's not just for fun, it's not just entertainment, it's not just a fucking movie, alright? The shit in this movie is real. The feelings are real. The torture is real. It's not a set design. It's not... GIF graphics or something. It's real. All right. Just keeping the mood light. Well, like we need more of that. Do you think the human race needs more light moods? It needs to take it all lightly. It's, you know, we're, we're shock and awing in the, around the world. We're droning. We're doing all this shit and we should keep the mood light. I mean, you, you know, this is just such serious, the consequences are serious. I mean, not, you know, literally millions of human consciousnesses at stake, billions, all right? And then that, you know, untold, I mean, I can't even calculate for you a real number about the sentient wildlife that will be implicated by how we farm it and treat it and, and what we do. Light mood? I mean, if you want a light mood, don't play a real game. Okay? Yeah, life's real. All right? Become a virtual character in a virtual fake world where light moods are appropriate. But that's just not where we live. It's not the universe we exist in. The light mood universe, this is just not that place. I'm sorry. I mean, I wish I could make it that way. I wish I could... I mean, I, I myself would love to be able to just light the mood it all way, all way. But damn it, that's not where we are. And that's not where we are on the internet here. And I know you. this is, you're just saying, okay, I'm just being an entertainer. Well, I mean, can't you be entertaining on some subject that doesn't matter then? Can't you make yourself more irrelevant? I mean, I know you did put the subscribe, right? Happy, happy, me, 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 great, great, great stuff on the end of your video, like you're some kind of YouTube piece of crap, <laughs> useless, ignorable mush. But, you know, maybe you should put that shit in the front of the video and just point out, I'm not doing anything meaningful here. I don't mean this to be relevant, okay? I'm just sort of jerking off and using you as the hanky. Anyway, there are things in life I take seriously. Well, <laughs> you know, not, not on the internet. <laughs> but YouTube is not one of them. Well, gee, it's the most powerful, one of the most powerful communication mediums in the universe. But now, you're not going to take it seriously. Why? Because no one else is taking it seriously. So if mommy, you know, somebody tells you to run off a cliff, you'll just run off a cliff? Is that how it works? Because everybody else is doing it? Because everybody else isn't taking it seriously, you won't take it seriously too, and that'll make it work better, right? No, that won't. That, that's, how you, that's how you create failure, right? Is to do as the assholes do. Follow the asshole. That's a perfect way to make more asshole. So, I mean, that's kind of a lame excuse. You don't want to take YouTube seriously? Well, you know, just understand the consequences of that, okay? That you're basically pissing, um, you know, acid on the golden goose, so to speak. You're just destroying a valuable piece of human infrastructure, 
um, for a wank. I'd still gladly buy you a beer next time I'm near New Jersey. And I'd gladly whap you over the head with it and say, there, do you feel good now? Uh, do you want more of that? Bring it on? Is that what you said? Bring it on? Um, anyway, I've met lots of people on YouTube over the years. Have a good one. Yeah, well, whatever. Eric. Eric. It's one of my uh, most unfavorite names. I've probably already pointed that out, though. <sighs> So anyway, but you you get the gist. You can't not get the gist. I mean, I just basically made the point pretty well, I think. So anyway, I guess I'll make another video with these other notes. I have a couple. You know, it's not much. But I did have a couple of observations. You know, having to do with the slow maturation of human beings and the program desire to live and you know the the kill yourself argument is just so stupid and the happy thing. Like somehow you, I'm suggesting people should be unhappy. I think it's quite obvious I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, look, you know, you have so many hours in a day. <laughs> yeah, you know, yes, you could you can you play with yourself for ten of them and then give like one of them to civilization or some kind of, I'm not asking for much here. I'm just saying when you're going to pretend to be a human being, um, <clears throat> well, when you're going to try... Well, no. I mean, you are pretending. I mean, I'm just saying, when you're going to think of yourself as a human being and participate with other human beings in the game of life, which is serious business, please take it a little bit serious and do that other stuff, that ha, 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 laughy, laughy. <laughs> There's a smiley face. I want to go kiss it. I mean, do that on your own time, so to speak. <sighs> yeah. So anyway. You know, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. Feels like enough of a video. No, yeah, I no, I no. well, one is another cigarette. Maybe that, I can make a longer video then, but I really got to save some for tomorrow. Must, I must, I must. So anyway, until next time. Yeah, that's enough of a video.